At this point in this series of how to learn how to code using C-sharp, um, we have tinkered a little bit with our first structures on how to decide um, whether to make decisions on a program. And we have been able to alter the typical flow of a program, which is starting from the beginning and then executing all of the statements on the list, one after the other in order. And we have been able to tweak that. We have been able to customize the flow of our program by using conditional statements, if else, if else, to choose which areas, which lines of code should be executed based on a certain condition. So we have been able to implement, imagine the program going one of the, we have been able to implement jumps between, um, between different lines of code based on particular conditions. All right, so that's what's called conditional statements or conditional flow. Uh, but another technique that I would like to teach you is called iteration. And the idea is that we can have programs where we are going one, we're executing all the lines of code one after the other, but at some point we want to perform an operation so many times that we actually don't want to write that those all of those lines of codes. We want to write that operation that repetition in a programmatic way so that we can just say, can you do this line of code like a hundred times with some value that is changing while you're doing this? And then just like create like a loop going to executing those lines of code uh, one after the other and then continuing the flow of the program, okay? So this is what I'm going to teach you right now. And that te those te the techniques around that are called iteration, okay? And the idea is very simple. Imagine that I had a program and I wanted, for example, to write to the console the first uh, ten, um, the first ten digits. So what I will need to do with what we know so far is say, well, I'm going to start by console write line in zero, then console write line in the number one, and so on and so on, so that I actually end up writing something like this. The first ten digits. It will take me a lot to to type, but at the same time, even if that's what I wanted, it's kind of not the best code because uh, if I were to say, well, now for some reason, instead of 10, I need 15 or 25 or I need 100, I cannot really customize this better than, um, I cannot customize this better than just adding or removing more lines in the code manually. It's hard coded, all right? Everything is just written as explicit code, which is typically not a great practice. So if we can find a way to programmatically with an elegant structure, say, take this line of code and repeat it a hundred times with this one thing, this one value, this one object, this one piece of data that is going to change with each one of those iterations. If there was such a structure, it would save me a lot of time of typing, but it would also make my program more programmatic, more customizable, right? Without having to actually modify the code. So this is what I'm going to teach you right now. And I'm going to teach you several structures and several techniques to perform iteration and to perform repeated operations in a programmatic way when writing computer code. And the first one that I'm going to teach you are while loops. And so let's go to the next video and check how that looks like. So the first structure that I would like to teach you in order to perform iteration in a computer program are called while loops. And they're the simplest form of iteration that uh, most computer programming languages feature. Um, they're very simple and very easy to use, but they're actually not the most popular one. And I'm going to teach you this one right now because it's going to lead me to better uh, explaining how the actual most popular uh, way of performing iteration works internally. But we'll get to that in a second. So before that, let's go back to the example that we were trying to do. Let's try to make, write a program that is going to print out to the console the first 10 digits, for example. Uh, this could be, this would be the manual way of doing that. But I, I, as, I'm, as I was saying before, I want a more programmatic, more customizable way of doing that. So the way this could work is, for example, we could start by defining a, an integer variable. I'm going to name it i, for example, and it's going to start at zero because we want to start uh, counting by zero. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a while loop that is going to print all those 10 digits one after the other. The way while structures work, work is that you write them at, like this. So you say, you start with the word while, and then you open and close parentheses, and you open a square, a curly bracket block. 
This now should start getting looking familiar. It's like if statements. Uh, they also have a word and they have parentheses for a condition that needs to meet. And then they have the block of code that will execute. So inside of parentheses, what I need to write is I need to write an expression, something that evaluates to true or false. And that expression is going to define what needs to be true for the while loop to keep executing. All right. So as long as whatever is written inside of parentheses is true, then this block of code will keep executing one after the other in cycles. All right. So for example, let's say if I is going to represent that number that I want to print to the console, then what I want to say is, well, probably while I is less than, for example, the value of 10, then I want to be printing to the console the value of I. Don't do this. Don't press enter. Don't execute this. Okay. Don't do this at home. <laughs> because, and let me explain to you, uh, while I is less than 10, then print the value of I to the console. But if I were to execute this code, and please don't, you don't do it yourself, okay? I'm going to start this. And what you can see is that, um, I don't know if you can notice my console, you can see the cursor, how it's going, going, and how this is flickering. This is happening because right now, the console is printing 0, 0, 0, 0, constantly and infinitely, all right? And actually, my program, I don't know if you can notice, but it's not responsive. It actually got um, it actually got trapped into what's called an infinite loop. And why is that the case? It was the case because in during the life of my program, I am executing this line of code so long as I is less than 10. But there is no code anywhere in my program that is changing the value of I so that eventually at some point it may actually not be less than five and therefore this block of code will stop executing. In a way, because I never changes, the program got stuck. The program got uh, blocked here in this block and is repeating it over and over again. And if this was a real program, my program would have gotten trapped here and would keep executing and will probably whatever operating system this is living on, it will probably give me an error like, oh, uh, not responding, I can't do anything, blah, 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 because the program is stuck. It is an infinite loop. And this is one of the most common errors or one of the most common um, problems when in, in, in real programming out there, right? So your phone, apps on your phone probably get stuck sometimes, you know, and that's because somehow they got, uh, the program got stuck on a for loop that it can't get out of for whatever reason. All right. So how do we fix this? Um, well, the idea is actually super simple with what I need to do is I need this value of I to at some point be greater than 10. And if what I want is to print all the print to print instead of like a bunch of zeros, one after the other, I want to print zero, one, two, three, blah, blah, blah. What I need to do is every time I print the value of I to the console, then I need to increase the value of I by one unit. All right. And we have seen before, if you remember from the operators video, we can do it in many different ways. So we can say I is going to be I equal plus one. So whatever I was before, we can increment it by one unit. We can shortcut this to saying, can you increment the value of I plus one? So plus equal one, or even for the particular case of having one unit of incrementing by one unit, we, that has its own, um, its own shortcut, which is I plus plus. All right. So if we do that, then what happens is that we can execute this code. And now the code will start with zero. It will increment the value of I, it becomes one, it executes this again, uh, one is less than 10. So it prints one, it uh, uh, it increments to two, two is less than 10. So it, it, it prints the number two, I becomes three, so, 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 until a point where I is nine, I is still less than 10, it prints nine, and then I increments to the value of 10. And then the next time this is checked, I has the value of 10. At that point, I is not less than 10. And therefore, 
the program, the program keeps executing, it hits the read key, and everything stops. Okay. So this is the typical way you create a um, simple iteration. You basically start, you visually initialize some value, okay? You typically use that value or some other value that lives in your program to check how, when this uh, while loop should stay alive. And then while you're doing things in your iteration block, in your while loop, you also often modify that value that you're checking against so that at some point you know that you will finish executing this while loop, okay? But again, be very careful when you use while loops because if you forget to either increment the value of i, you will get stuck on an infinite loop that will, um, that will print infinite zeros, for example, in this case. And very often, in, uh, Visual Studio is not crashing, but some other programming environments will become unresponsive and you will actually have to force close all your system. Or if instead of, for example, incrementing by one, you forget or you confuse or it's a typo and then you start decrementing the value of i, you will see that i will also never be greater than 10. So now you can see how I'm printing infinitely values that are increasing in the negative spectrum. You're, all right. So this is not printing infinite zeros, but it's also stuck in an infinite loop that it will never get out of. Okay. So, um, oops, so I can't really get out of this program. So um, this is the basic way you write a for loop, you start a value, you initialize a value, you check that value for a particular condition, then you do whatever you want to do. And then you increase or decrease or modify that value so that at some point, this condition stops meeting, and then you can continue with your program. All right. And then this idea, this structure is so, so popular that um, so this pa pattern of initializing a value, checking that value and updating that value, it's so common and so popular, that is what actually inspired the next uh, way of implementing iteration that I'm going to teach you, which is for loops. So stay tuned for that one.